Hello, welcome to Frigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 71 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about custom errors in ASP.NET. In the previous session of this video series, we have discussed about error events. Error events can happen at the page level and at an application level. Let's quickly recap what we have discussed in the previous session of this video series. I have this webform1.aspx and on that I have a grid view control. I also have this XML file which lists the countries. We want to display these countries within the grid view control on this webform1. And to do that, we are creating an instance of the dataset object and then we are invoking the read XML method which can read the XML data from the XML file into the dataset. And that data set in turn is used as the data set uh, data source for the grid view control and we are calling the data bind method. And as you might expect, once we run this application, it reads the XML data loads into the uh, grid view control. And we have it on the web form as expected. Now just imagine what's going to happen if somebody deletes this XML file. So if we delete that and if we try to access that web form 1.aspx again, uh, it tries to read that file and we will get an exception. And at the page load event procedure level, we don't have a try catch block. So obviously that exception gets propagated to the page level. And at the page level, we don't have uh, you know page underscore error event handler. So it's not handled at the page level as well. So it gets propagated till the application level. And at the application level, we have application underscore error event handler within global.asax file. Now, if I uncomment this, okay, look at what we are doing here. We are getting the exception using get server.getLastError method. And then we can do whatever we want with that exception. Maybe we can log it to a database or to the event viewer. Or we might even send an email to the development team notifying them about the exceptional condition. And then we are clearing the error and finally we are redirecting the user to errors.aspx page. And if you look at errors.aspx page, it's a pretty simple uh, page that has got this HTML uh, which notifies the user uh, that there is an application error. Okay, so now if we run this once again, as you might expect, instead of you know, we get an exception, but since there is uh, a centralized exception handler in global.asx file, we get redirected to that errors.aspx file as expected. But for the time being, let's comment what's there in global.asx file. So now we don't have any kind of exception handling. So obviously, when we run this, we get that yellow screen of death, and displaying that screen is bad for many reasons. Okay, so we get this hello screen of death. Now let's actually see how to use custom error pages. Now, we can configure custom error pages at two levels, at the page level and at the application level. First, let's see how to configure uh, custom error pages at the application level. Now to configure the custom error pages at the application level, we use custom errors element. Okay, and uh, we set the mode attribute to on. In fact, it, it can also take values like off and remote only. We'll talk about that just in a bit. And then default redirect, we are saying default error page.aspx. And then look at this. Here we are using some error status codes. So what are these? These are called HTTP status codes. Okay, now there will be HTTP response codes coming back, you know, depending on the HTTP response code or status code, we can actually redirect the user to specific pages. For example, you know, if we have, if we are navigating within an application and we are trying to type in the URL of a page that does not exist, then, you know, obviously we get an error message saying page not found. So under those circumstances, for example, uh, where the status code is 404, I want to redirect the user to my own custom error page, page not found error page. I can do that using these HTTP status codes. Unauthorized, if you're trying to access an unauthorized page, then you will get an HTTP status code of 401. And similarly, if there is an unhandled exception happening on the server, then it's called as status code 500, that's internal server exception. Okay, so depending on the status, status codes, you can redirect the user to specific pages. Okay, so let's see how to do how to configure that. So within web.config file, I'm using this custom errors element. Let me uncomment this now. So now the mode is set to on, default redirect is this one. Okay, now let me actually run this application. So we have webform1.aspx. Okay, now we get you know an internal server exception. 
Why? Because we have an exception here. And then if you look at web.config, exception is status code 500, and we are redirecting the user to internal server error page. And if you look at that page, it's a pretty simple um, ASPX page that has just this H1 saying this message internal server error. So we are redirecting the user to that page. And that's being done automatically for us. Look at the user uh, URL internal server error. OK. On the other hand, if you don't have that status code, for example, in web.config file, let's say if I don't have the status code, then what's going to happen? Let me try to access this. If I don't have that status code, then the default redirect page will be used. So default error page. And what is that one? Look at the URL. It's default error page dot ASPX. So what is that page? Where is that configured? That is configured in default redirect. Since I don't have that status code here, this default redirection page will be used. On the other hand, if I try to navigate to maybe you know some garbage like this, I don't have this web form, a web form with that name. And for 404, page not found status code, I have configured, you know, show this page, page not found error page, which simply says, you know, page not found. And that's what we see here. So custom error pages, you know, depending on different HTTP status codes, you can have users redirected to, you know, specific error pages that you specify within your web.config file. It is also possible you can have custom error pages at the page level. And how do we do that using error page attribute? So for example, if at all, if there is any error on this webform1.aspx, then for this webform alone, I want to show a specific custom error page. Is that possible? Absolutely. And how do we do that? We use this error page attribute at the page level. And then you can specify whatever you want. For example, let's say I want to show this unauthorized error page.aspx. And if just to make sure we are not using that here. So if there is an unhandled exception on this page, then I'm going to get that exception. I mean, get to that page, unauthorized page. And that's what we see here. OK. And now the important point is you know, the mode attribute. In fact, this is asked as a very common interview question as well. You know, what are the different attribute, I mean, what are the different values that a mode attribute can take and what happens when we set it to off or on or remote only? Now, first, before we discuss about these attributes, let's discuss about the way a web application is accessed and the terms used in accessing that. Now, on my machine, I have the web server. The application is running on my machine. So if I access this on my machine, then I'm accessing it locally. But then if this web application is present in an intranet or an internet, then this web application can be accessed from a remote machine as well. All they have to do is fire up the browser, type in the URL of this application, and you are accessing that from a different machine. So which means you are accessing that remotely on a remote machine. Whereas if I access this on this web on this laptop, then this is uh, I'm accessing it locally. OK? So, when you set the attribute, the mode attribute to on, then custom error pages are displayed both on the local machine and the remote machine. Whereas if you set it to off, then custom error pages are not displayed anywhere. Instead, that exception page is shown. Whereas if we set it to remote only, then on local machine, you know, the exception page is shown so that the users, you know, the developers who are debugging the application on the local machine can figure out uh, what, what is that exception and resolve it. But whereas for remote users, the configured custom error pages are shown. And that's why, you know, this remote only is the default. And that's okay because to show the custom error pages on local machine is fine. Okay. Now, another important point to keep in mind is if the redirection is done in application underscore error event handler in global.asax, custom error pages will have no effect. So which means in global.asax file, let's go ahead here and let me uncomment this. So if you look at this here, I am redirecting the user to errors.aspx page. Okay, and application underscore, we are doing that within this application underscore error event handler. So when we run this now, if you look at this web form, it also has got error page. Now, if you look at this web form 1.aspx, it has got this error page attribute. We have configured custom errors in web.config file. And within global.asax file, we have this redirection happening here. OK. Now, which one will have precedence? Will this errors.aspx page be shown? 
or will unauthorized error page be shown or whether this default error page be shown. Now it turns out that this error page attribute at the page level will have higher precedence over global.asax and then you know web.config. But then if I get rid of this error page attribute then the user will be redirected to you know errors.aspx. On the other hand if I don't have this redirection here and if I'm not doing the exception handling here then web.config. So that's the precedence. Error page attribute at the page level, global.asax redirection and then web.config custom errors. Okay but then in real time it's not common, it's not very common to actually use um, error page attributes at the page level. We either use custom error pages or accept, you know, exceptional handling and redirection in global.asax. You know, I personally haven't used custom error pages a lot. You know, a lot of time in a lot of the projects, you know, we use application underscore error because we can handle the exception, do whatever we want and redirect the user wherever we want. Okay, so we have greater flexibility here than uh, you know using custom error pages but in interviews a lot of questions are surrounding these custom error pages so it's good to understand these concepts as well okay so if the redirection is done in application underscore error event handler in global.asax custom error pages configured in web.config will have no effect okay in your application if you have to display specific custom error pages for specific HTTP status codes then use custom errors um, if you just have one generic error page then global.asax can be used and please note that the exception object needs to be retrieved before the user is redirected to a custom error page because a custom error page is displayed through redirection the context of the error is lost and server.getLastError returns nothing from the target custom error page so what I mean to say by this is for example if you look at what's happening let's close all these windows let's go to window close all document uh, let's save that and let's go to global.asx file okay now let's say I'm not handling the exception here I'm just you know in application underscore error event handler I'm just redirecting the user to errors.aspx page and within errors.aspx I am trying to retrieve the exception and then kind of do my exceptional handling and logging there will I be able to do that will I be able to retrieve the exception here let's see that okay so let's put a breakpoint here and let's also put a breakpoint in application underscore error and let's try to access this web form. Let's put that in debug mode. Obviously on the page I don't have a try catch block so uh, but there is an unhandled exception on that page so it gets all the way to application underscore error event handler within global.asax file. Okay so in page load I don't have try catch I press F5 so it gets to application er underscore error but I am not you know handling the exception here I'm simply redirecting the user to errors.aspx and then when I get to the page load of errors.aspx let's see what happens so look at that you know the exception object is null so you will have to retrieve that within that application underscore error because you will not be able to retrieve that on this error page where you have redirected the user because you know since the user landed on this page through a redirection the error is lost on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day